Keeping ourselves safe is a child protection program. It is not a sex education program. Keeping ourselves safe has been a part of the school education since 1986. We can't be with our children 24 seven. Our job as parents is to prepare our children for life and their future as adults. The skills and knowledge and experiences of childhood carry them through to adulthood. We need to empower our children and build their resilience to cope with the challenges that life presents. Stranger danger. In the majority of cases, the abusers are known and trusted to our victims. Stranger danger needs to be replaced. It is dangerous to use this term because it is easier for people who didn't look like strangers, like mean looking people. It failed to protect from the huge amount of non-stranger abuse. And it was confusing because children do have to interact with strangers if they need to ask for help, for example, like walking into a shop if they're lost in a shopping mall and asking to use the phone. We need to instead be concentrating on the type of person to keep away from. Keeping ourselves safe teaches children and young people the behaviours to identify and avoid, whether they are from people that are known to us or people that are unknown to us. We need to be using the terminology behaviour danger. These are the different types of abuse. The programme teaches the children about these different types of abuse. Physical, sexual, emotional, neglect, cyber abuse and family violence. Child abuse to the year ended 30th of June 2016 cost our country $2 billion. On average one child is killed every five weeks. Abused and neglected children are 24% more likely to experience problems such as delinquency, teen pregnancy, low academic achievement, drug use and mental health problems. Now we will look at the overview of the teaching programs that your children will be learning. The junior school from year 0 to 2 will be working with the junior program. The I am unique part of the program, they will learn who they are, where they live, their name, their address which is where you will need to help them. They will look at how they feel about feelings of safe and unsafe places. I will be teaching them the segment on my body is my own. We will learn about the physical body parts of our private parts. We will explain why we need to use the proper names. Children need to know the proper names because nicknames are different in different families and it can be confusing when they want to explain something that has happened to them and they use the nicknames. I will be empowering the children to understand that their body belongs to them and they are in control of who touches their body. We can't be embarrassed when we're talking to our children. Your children will be encouraged to come home and talk to you about the names that they have learned. There will be homework sessions around this. We need to have conversations with our children younger than what we probably did when we grew up. The younger we start, the easier it is. When a child asks a question, that is their sign to tell you that they are ready to have the conversation. I will teach them about good touch, bad touch and confusing touch. We can talk about sexual touch without having to talk about sex. We will talk to them about how to deal with unwanted touch, how to say no. We will talk to them about secrets and tricks. We need to teach our children to not keep secrets. If we want our child to keep a secret, say for example about a present, it may be a better to rephrase how you say that by using the word surprise because abusers often get children to keep secrets. They will be taught about the adults who can help them. We will be asking them to keep a list of adults that they can go to for help and we will be encouraging them not to just rely on family. My experience is young people struggle sometimes to talk to parents and so as parents we need to encourage our children to have a range of people that they can trust. For example, teachers, uh, police and other organisations that we have in our community to help our young people. As parents I encourage you to talk with your children if you no longer have landlines at home, how they can phone you if you are not home. For example, they might have a babysitter or somebody else looking after them and they need to phone you. How do they do that if all the cell phones are out? Also, if the internet and Wi-Fi go down or there is a power cut and you only have a phone that is used as power, 
How do they do that? Who maybe is the neighbour that they go to if they need to leave the house to ask for support? Have a safety plan in, in place if you are not home. For example, if there's an accident that stops you from getting to the house, your children need to have a plan and what to do. My experience as a child that is organised um, with a plan in their head handle an unexpecting situation a lot better than a child that has no plan. Have a safety word for children if you're not going to pick them up and you can't get advice to them as to who is going to pick them up. I had one child, theirs was red rhinoceros. And so if you ask somebody to pick them up, you say to them, just say to the child this word and that signals to your child that it is uh, safe for them to go with them, even if they're known to them. Always use that safety word. In the middle school, the confident me segment is about them building their confidence to believe in themselves. We need to empower our children to trust their own instinct, to trust their gut feeling. There is a story called BB's Gifts. Now, some children are shocked by this. It is about a girl that is abused by her mother's boyfriend, new boyfriend. It does happen, and it shows the kids the kind of danger that kids can face. And even for the children that may live in a safe environment, it also gives them an understanding that not all children live in a safe environment. And one day, they, they may be called upon to support a child that's not in a safe environment. It helps them understand what they can do to help. They will look at the safe and unsafe, look at the real world examples, some quite graphic examples. Um, for example, sticking the tongue down their throat or teach, touching the penis. Um, we Again, we need to have some examples that we can show the kids what inappropriate or inappropriate touching is. To a child that lives in a safe environment, they don't necessarily understand what inappropriate touching looks like. They'll talk about the digital world. In the no excuses for abuse section, they talk about the abuse. They talk about the different types, as we mentioned earlier. They talk about bribes and secrets and the differences between them. Example, a bribe is attempt to tempt someone to do something by offering them money or treats. A secret is something that is not to be told or shown to other people. A trick is to do something cunning to fool another person. Uh, the why should I tell segment has passed the ball, which is, has some safe and unsafe situations. How to say no and people they can trust. The senior primary, which is our year sevens and seven and eights. The keeping one step ahead is choosing safe options, role playing. The I'm responsible for others. They'll start to talk about babysitting, what the responsibilities of babysitting is. They'll talk about bullying and they'll talk about caring for others. Finding out about abuse. They're, they will talk about being home alone. Identifying abuse and feelings about abuse. Families working together. They'll talk about family discipline, family stress and the right to be cared for and safe. Reporting abuse, deciding what to do and reporting and how to report abuse. And what happens now? What happens after you tell and sharing the new knowledge? That they've learned. What can you do as parents, caregivers and whānau to support your children while keeping ourselves safe is in the school? Get involved everywhere in your child's life, not just while keeping ourselves safe is being taught. I cannot encourage you enough to ask how your child's day is, what they're learning. Talk to the teachers about what they're learning if your child is not sharing. Ask about your child's sports and activities that they do, who they associate with when they're there. You need to know who your children's friends are. If you only know their first names, find out their surnames. Get to know their parents. With keeping ourselves safe, there will be some homework activities. I encourage you to do those activities with them. It will open the door to some conversations. The biggest feedback I get for keeping ourselves safe is parents thanking me. Thanking me for having the program in the school, for starters, that starts the conversation that they're a little unsure on how to start. As I said earlier, create a safety plan. We will be sharing a link to the parents' frequently asked questions and there will also be a link to the Keeping Kids Safer booklet. Print this out from the website and do some of those activities with your children. We need to help our children 
children build their self-management and their self-responsibility. You can do this by not always meeting them at the classroom or at the school gate. Maybe giving your children the chance to walk a little distance away from school where you have parked to pick them up. This also means you avoid the chaos at the school gate. It's giving them the chance to maybe cook a meal as they get older and teaching them how to do it and then leaving them to do it. Getting them to pack their own school bag, make their own lunch. All of these little things help build your child's self-management. I know from experience just how our family changed when my son was five years old. He wanted to make his lunch. To this day he is now nine years old and he still makes his lunch every day. Of course, in the early days, I did have to check it to make sure there was enough. It is okay to say no. We do not need to be always saying yes to our children. They need to learn to wait for things. And as a parent, it's okay to make mistakes. But it's also okay for children to make mistakes. That is how we learn. One day, you might find yourself needing to deal with your child reporting abuse. And I can assure you, it does not just happen in the families that you might think that it happens in, whether it's lower socioeconomic, or children from troubled families. I can assure you, 20 years in the police, it is happening in every demographic of our community. So if you ever find yourself needing to, maybe it's your child, or it might be your child's friend who feels that they can trust you enough to talk, this is how we deal with it. You need to let them know that you believe and accept what they are saying. Thank them for telling you. Tell them that you believe in them. Show them your love, your concern, and your support. Keep your feelings to yourself. This is really important. Keeping any feelings you might have, such as anger, fear, guilt, or disgust, to yourself. Children will notice your reactions to what they tell you. If you get angry, children might think you're angry with them and may not tell you again or tell you anymore. Keep calm. If you show shock, your child will withdraw and the truth may never be known. Listen carefully to what is said. Don't interrogate or question a child about what has happened. A person trained to deal with abuse can talk with your child at a later time. This will probably be very difficult as you will want to find out as much as possible from your child. However, questioning from you could influence the outcome of any court proceedings at a later date. From a police point of view, that is huge. We need you to just get enough to know that something has happened. The best open-ended question you could ask them is tell me. Tell me what it looked like. Tell me who was there. Tell me how that felt. Once you have enough to know that there has been some abuse or something untoward, you need to stop. Reassure them that it is not their fault. Tell the child that they are not to blame for what someone else has done to them. Something like, I'm very sorry this has happened to you. What happened was not your fault. That person should not have done that to you. Tell them that you're pleased that they have told you and that you are very sorry about what has happened. Explain that this happens to a lot of children and praise them for telling you. You You're very brave for telling me. I am very pleased that you have told me. Assure them that you will be doing something to get them help. Seek help and advice for you and your child. Dealing with abuse is painful and you need to find someone that you can trust. Someone who has heard these things before and will not judge you or your family. Report to Oranga Tamariki or the police. You will find their telephone numbers in your phone book. If you report, you are legally protected unless you acted in bad faith. This is just some extra information that I would like to pass on to you that I would normally deliver in a face-to-face parent meeting. This is a lesson that I have developed. We're finding an increasing number of children using apps that aren't appropriate for their age, watching movies that aren't appropriate for their age, and um, playing video games that aren't meant for their age. So I teach the children how to identify what these labels mean and how to make good choices. And I talk to them about why those good choices are important in regards to our brain development. I talk to them about how their brain grows the most it will ever grow in their life up to the age of seven. And then it continues to grow for boys, sometimes up to age 32, and girls sometimes up to the age of 27. And how everything that we see, hear and do or feel creates pathways in our brains. The technical term for that is myelination. So just some tips for parents. Are you aware that an M-rated movie is actually recommended for 16 years or older? Uh, And that actually red labels, are it's actually illegal for you as parents to allow your children to see or play these video games and movies. What it can do to their brains is if they're watching a lot of violence, 
it creates violent pathways in their brain. And my experience in teaching over the last four years has I've seen that the children that are playing these video games and watching their violent movies are generally the children that struggle to sit still, struggle to have an attention span for a long period of time, also demonstrate the behaviour that they are watching. With apps such as TikTok and Instagram, what I'm finding is not every child, but every job that I am dealing with where there's been inappropriate use of such apps, whether they be the victim of or uh, the person doing the bad behavior, uh, they all got those apps at a young age, younger than what it is recommended for. You can Google uh, what the recommended age is for New Zealand, and there's a website, I think, Common Sense uh, Classifications, and that gives you an idea of what uh, they should be using. For example, TikTok and Instagram is recommended for 13 years or older. And there is a huge amount of harm being caused by children that are watching movies and playing video games and using apps that are not recommended for their age. Uh, just also parents that believe that children should have cell phones for safety reasons there's some valuable lessons that are not being learnt because children are being given phones, such as how to go into a shop and ask for help, how to maybe approach somebody to ask to use a phone, how to walk, like use a map and walk safely to your after school activity or to walk home uh, because they're using Google Maps, for example. The pornography, something that uh, I am seeing more and more is causing harm for our young people. As you can see there, 14% of boys at the age of 12 had viewed pornography by, in 2008, whether intentionally or uh, by mistake. That has grown to 65% last year. There is a website called Pornhub. It is the 23rd most visited, uh, most popular website in the world, ahead of Netflix. 75% of all traffic to that website is by mobility device. 47% uh, of 15 to 19 year old boys use pornography every day and 27% of them use it weekly. I attended a couple of years ago a seminar called Sex Education by Porn. Yep, that's right. Our children are not using learning about sex via conversations with parents and sexuality education in school. They are learning what a sexual relationship looks like by watching porn. 94% of pornography showed aggression towards women. 95% of that aggression was met with a positive response. What is that doing for our family harm stats? These are some statistics that we show to year 12 students in a program called Loves Me Not, which is a healthy relationships program we teach in the secondary school. That top statistic is what made me do what I'm doing now. 15 to 19 year olds have the highest rate of intimate partner violence. Is that not the time in our lives where we should be, yes, experimenting, but life should still be pretty simple. We want our children to have relationships, but we want our children to have healthy relationships where there is no power and control, that it is based around equality. We need to take care of our children, take care of what they hear, take care of what they see, take care of what they feel. For how the children grow, so will the shape of Aotearoa. Thank you for your time. And here's a poem I found. Given what we are living through right now, this gives us some food for thought about parenting. I am a hummingbird parent. I hover nearby, but not over my kids. I remain distant enough to let them explore and learn to solve problems. I teach them skills, mainly by example. I zoom in only when their survival is threatened. My goal for them isn't a risk-free childhood, but a resilient one. We need to be there for our children, but we also need to let them fail. We need to help them judge the risk, but sometimes we learn the greatest examples when we fail. Good luck. If you have any questions, ask your child's teacher. They have had training from me and can help with the program, questions you may have. All the best. Take care and thanks again for your time.